Jelani Day was the kind of guy who showed up. As a kid, he showed up for a boy being bullied for a speech impediment. And inspired by that childhood friendship, as a 25-year-old, he showed up in his grad program at Illinois State University, working toward becoming a doctor for speech pathology. And he showed up for his family, calling and texting them every day so often, his mother jokingly called him her bill collector. So when Jelani didn't show up one day, it was obvious that he wasn't just gone. He was missing. And they were right. Because when he finally did show up 10 days later, he was badly decomposed, floating in the Illinois River, an hour away from home in a town where he didn't know anyone. Now, this is a case where nothing makes sense. With each new detail, this mystery gets stranger and more unbelievable, and you will not believe where this goes. Now see if you can make any sense of this. Theories range from a tragic accident or suicide to murder and a statewide ring of organ thieves. But if you ask the LaSalle County coroner what happened, the answer is simple. Jelani Day drowned and that's it. According to this quote, there was no evidence of any other injuries such as manual strangulation and assault, an altercation, sharp, blunt, or gunshot injury, or significant drug intoxication. Although he did admit the exam was suboptimal because the hot August weather and animal activity had done so much damage to the body. But Jelani was a strong swimmer. How could he just drown? So let me walk you backwards through the timeline because I'm really curious about your take on this. Because right now, the cop's working theory is baffled. When he didn't show up for class on August 25th, he was reported missing. Two days before that was the last time he spoke to his mother, Carmen Bolden Day. Their conversation on that Monday was just like any other. He called to check in, give her an update on some errands she asked him to do, and to hear her voice, the same sweet thing he always said when they talked. The next day, Tuesday, August 24th, 2021, one day before police got the call, Jelani got to school early. He was seen on camera buying coffee at the student center on campus around 7.20 a.m., dressed in a blue button-down, black slacks, black dress shoes, and a face covering. Now, later that day, he had classes scheduled and a tentative plan to meet up with one of his professors for a quick conversation, which is why it was so strange when security cameras caught him walking into a cannabis dispensary in Bloomington at 9.12 that morning, wearing a completely different outfit, a Hendrix concert tee, a baseball cap, and shorts. And when he left the store, he was never seen alive again. The day after he was reported missing, they found his car. Hmm. But it wasn't where they expected it to be. It had been hidden behind some trees in a residential neighborhood behind the YMCA in Peru an hour away from Bloomington, a little bit more than halfway to Chicago. Now, this was the kind of hiding spot only locals would know about, a grassy clearing surrounded by a ring of trees accessible only by a dirt road that looked more like a dead end unless you'd been there before. But it gets stranger. The car's license plates were gone. So were the keys. So was Jelani's phone. Those are still missing. But the clothes he was wearing at the dispensary the day before were in the back seat. Now, seven days after they found his car, someone called to say they found his wallet. It was half hidden in some bushes on a residential street less than a mile away from his car. And then three days later, on September 4th, Jelani himself was found. A search party saw his body floating in the Illinois River near the Route 251 bridge. He was wearing an undershirt and underwear with a sweatshirt wrapped around his waist, according to the pantograph. But the body was in such bad shape that he had to be identified with dental records, and that took another three weeks. In the meantime, two students from ISU drove up to help search, and they found his shoes, socks, and shorts about a mile down the riverbank. His student ID was found all the way on the other side of the river. So what the fudge? Now you need to meet Jelani, because when you hear the way his mother talks about him, you'll start to understand why nothing about a suicide theory or anything else about this case makes sense. Here she is with Newsy. Jelani is just, uh, 
he's just a normal grown growing up 25 year old that was enjoying his life he loved to have fun with his friends he loved to travel and he was in school he was studying to be a speech pathologist he wanted to be dr jelani day she lives in danville where jelani grew up with his four other siblings he got his undergrad degree from alabama a m in huntsville and then he moved back to illinois for grad school at illinois state university which is in normal illinois but he got an apartment in bloomington only a few minutes away from campus and about an hour and a half from his hometown you're gonna know a lot about Illinois before this case is over. Based only on the first coroner's report, the official theory seems to be leaning towards suicide. So to make that theory work, Jelani would have wanted to, for some reason, hide his car. Then he would have had to be pretty familiar with Peru to find that spot. And then after parking miles away from the river, he put on different clothes, but sort of just half dressed because you remember he was found with a sweatshirt around his waist and some other clothes were on the riverbank. So now with a new outfit on, he walked through this strange town down to the river and drowned. It makes no sense. But aside from everything else you've heard, here's the biggest reason why a self-harm theory just doesn't fit here. His father was sick with cancer at Northwestern Hospital in Chicago. He needed a bone marrow transplant. And according to his cousin, Jelani was a match and planning to donate. So come on, would he really voluntarily deprive his father of that? And if there is a world where he did go into that water on his own two feet, why would he choose to die there? As his mother said, there's water in Bloomington. Why would he go to Peru, Illinois? And why would an avid swimmer decide to drown himself at all? Let's say he wouldn't, which means he ended up there by force. So let's talk a little bit more about the state of his body after his death. The toxicology report showed caffeine, nicotine, and cannabis, but the amounts were considered not significant, according to the pantograph. It's the autopsy report that's the most controversial. The county coroner said his organs were liquefied after so much time in the warm river, and his jaw was sawed off, but not by an attacker. The first coroner said he removed it for identification purposes. According to him, there were no extenuating circumstances. Jelani just drowned. But because the body was so damaged, it's hard to understand how the county coroner could make that call. And his family doesn't understand it either. That's why they paid to have two more independent autopsies done. The second pathologist and the third noticed some evidence that seemed to conflict with the first coroner's findings. The most shocking? Jelani's brain, eyes, liver, and spleen may be missing. Here's a quote from a statement his siblings appeared to have made on the Justice for Jelani Day Facebook page. The pathologist was confused as to why the first pathologist did what he did to our brother's body to perform the autopsy itself. We are not taking organ harvesting off the table, but still, our mother's wishes are to not make organ harvesting the main focus. So, yeah. But real quick, let's talk about organ harvesting. It's sort of a big coincidence, isn't it? All the touch points he had with the medical industry when he disappeared, he's pursuing a medical degree. He's recently just found out he's a bone marrow match for his father. He's planning to be a donor for him. So while we were trying to separate fact from fiction in this case, we did a little research on how much money there is to be made from black market organs. And let me tell you, the organ thief theory, not that crazy. According to the medical futurist, if you could harvest every organ and chemical in your body, you could make almost $50 million. I mean, you couldn't spend it, but for your liver, you could get almost 200000 according to Ranker. Now, your spleen would bring in under 1000 because transplants are harder to do, and the corneas from your eyes could be worth a pretty penny. Ranker says they go for up to $30,000 on the black market. According to the American Transplant Foundation, corneas are the most commonly transplanted tissue. Now forget drugs and sex, the real crime boss money is in healthy bodies. That's terrifying, right? But before we go too far down that road, his family is asking for caution. They know he was murdered, but as far as the motive behind it, Well, they've had a hard enough time getting the investigation this far. They don't want to go running down to the station screaming about body thieves. At least 
you know, not yet. And that's where this case is stalled. Somewhere between a gruesome unsolved murder and an improbable suicide scenario. And if you're seeing red, that's all the bureaucratic tape wrapped up around this thing. There are six different local agencies investigating this case, according to the Bloomington Pantograph. Now, let me run it down for you again real quick. He was last seen in Bloomington, where he lived. They found his car in Peru, an hour away. And then his body, clothes, and other personal items turned up within miles of the car, but in various locations across city, county, and state land. Now, as of October 28th, the Peru Police Department say they've handed files over to the FBI, but that federal agency is just there to assist, not take over. And without them driving the investigation, this multi-jurisdictional BS is a get-out-of-jail-free card. And we might never know the truth about what really happened to Jelani Day. So, if you know something say something. The contact information is in the pinned comment below. I'm Amy. This is True Crime Recaps. And if you like getting all the crime in half the time, I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe and give this a like. Chris and I are here every week with new recaps. So remember to hit the bell so you never miss a story. Until next time, take care. And hey, why not have that second glass of wine? I mean, hey, if there's organ thieves out there, we don't need to make it easy for them.